brothers in arms, looking out for each other on the battlefield. Get through a little bit of war and have a little something to keep you up and going, keep you happy. The unconditional bond between a man and a dog, no matter the situation. Oh, buddy, good boy, good boy. Pause for Purple Hearts is combining these traditions to train service dogs for those suffering from the wounds of war, both physical and psychological. Someone came up with a brilliant idea. The idea was, since the dogs need training, why not ask combat veterans with post-traumatic stress to do that training? Ah. Good job. The first human contact these Golden Retriever puppies have is with the vets who will train them. David Jameson couldn't sleep through the night after his tour of duty with the 101st Airborne in Iraq. He drove from Chicago to the PTSD therapy program in Menlo Park. Not only is it, has the dog helped me, you know, with my emotional problems, it's uh, showed me that I can progress in life and not have to sit in my apartment or not have to sit uh, in a treatment center. Why do I need these hardcore drugs when I can have a hardcore dog that uh, keeps me on that level plane? I don't have to ride the roller coaster all day. He and Jason Baker completed their PTSD program and are now using their GI Bill yes. benefits to become professional dog hey. trainers. Their mission? make life better for disabled vets like Bill Smith. Bring him. Thank you. Good boy. Psychiatrists working with the VA's PTSD program are using the dogs to help them do what drugs and traditional therapy can't always do as quickly. The dog gives instant feedback quickly. So if, you're feel, if someone's feeling really down on themselves and they're not doing anything well and they give a good command to a dog. Jump. Good boy. The dog does it. You do positive reinforcement. Comes and licks you and gives you a big hug. You know, that's a, that's a that feel makes you feel great. <laughs> the same patience and positive reinforcement, so essential in dog training, jump, jump. happen to be the greatest obstacles PTSD veterans need to overcome. When we come in into this program, we're just, we're lost, you know, and the dog program has been so great to me. I know I, I don't know what I would do without it, you know. Since I've been back, um, I lost six guys to non-combat deaths, all suicides. After 20 years in the Marines, four combat deployments, and having washed out of his first PTSD therapy, Gunnery Sergeant Chris Hill finally found something that could help him deal with his anger, sleeplessness, and isolation. With Verde, it gives me a sense of, I have right now have somebody in my fighting hole with me that is here for me, not for him to make it through the next day alive, but to make sure I make it through the next day alive. Hi. Hi. So now I'm being forced to conversate. I'm being forced to interact. I'm being forced to deal with other people's emotions. I'm, I'm being forced to deal with my own. In addition to this pilot program here in California, there are now dog assistance training programs underway in Washington, D.C. at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. And one is in the works for the new Intrepid Center at Bethesda Naval Hospital. We're saying, do everything we can possible to ensure that the sacrifice that they have endured uh, is recognized and that when they come home, let's try to make them as whole as possible and let's be open to embrace some other forms of, of therapy.